Wait a minute, Arthur. I've got to go and pick something up. Well, don't be long. We're scheduled to take off at the hour. anyone should want to shoot at you. I'll give you one guess. What? This crate's being used for smuggling dope. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Oh, no, I'm not. I've suspected it for some while. But, um, what put you onto it? They approached me. They thought they could buy me. What did you do? I told them to go and take a jump. Since then, I've been doing a bit of snooping. Not only in Cairo, but the London end as well. You want to watch your step, you know? These characters are pretty tough. Has anybody ever approached you? <laughs> no. I'm only the second pilot. Anyhow, I'd have nothing to do with smuggling. You know what happens to air personnel to get tied up with that? When I mean, you're on the beach for good. Yes, I know. Call London Airport. What shall I say? Tell them I want a special custom search the moment we land. <laughs> it would look pretty silly if there's nothing here. Maybe. I have to be sure. I have Catherine to look after. Okay. You're the boss. Uh, BXY 540 calling London Airport. BXY 540 calling London Airport. Uh, London Airport? BXY 540. This is Sandy Mason, second pilot calling. Could you tell me who the customs duty officer is this morning? Right. Will you ask him to meet us as soon as we land? Why didn't you give them the message I told you? I said I wanted a special customs search. Well, it amounts to the same thing, Arthur, only less drama. I didn't want to make too much of it, just in case you're wrong. Well, what's all this about? I uh, think the smuggled dope aboard. You think it? Well, don't let's waste time arguing. Let's see the cargo. Not a thing. I think you've been letting your imagination run away with you, you know. Oh, sorry. Perhaps I should explain that it wasn't Sandy, but I... Right. See you, Keith. Please. Couple of bottles of brandy, that's all. I'm afraid you'll have to pay duty on one of them. You're being a bit tough, aren't you? I stick to the regulations. I should advise you to do the same. Your case, Mr. Hope? Just personal clothing. Nothing else? No. How about this? What is it? You didn't know it was there? No. Well, perhaps I'd better take a look at it. Go ahead. What is it? Well, I can't guarantee without having it analyzed, of course, but I should say it was 50% face powder and 50% heroin. I have never seen that box before. Uh oh. If I was smuggling dope, do you think that I would call the customs and ask for a special search? You asked for a special search? Of course. I thought it was your co-pilot. Well, yes, it was, Sandy, but I told him to do it. Oh, come off it, Arthur. You know, it was my idea. Your idea? Look, I'll do anything for my friends, but I'm not going to get mixed up in anything like this. Just what is this? You know perfectly well that I told you to make that call. Come on, now, let's have the truth. That won't help you, Holt. I'm going to have this powder analyzed. I'll trouble you for your passport, please. Yours, too. But we're flying out again this evening. You aren't flying anywhere. Telephone, 
for you. All right, Dee. I'll get it. It's Arthur. He's just coming, Arthur. Hello, Arthur. We've been meaning to come and see you and Catherine. How is she? Oh, she's adjusting herself wonderfully, thank you. But, Peter, I need your help. What's happened? I've been framed. I'm expecting to be arrested at any minute. Arrested? Why? For smuggling dope. But there's no truth in it. Well, what do you think? Peter, I've got to get clear of this, or... What will happen to Catherine? But how can I help? I know a good deal about the people who've been framing me. More than they think. As a matter of fact, one of them may be Sandy Mason, my co-pilot. Peter... Can you come to my house as soon as possible? I'm on my way. Fine. Mrs. Holt? Yes? Is your husband in? No, but I'm expecting him any minute now. Oh, good. My name's Sparrow. I work for the old firm, too. He must have mentioned me. Well, I don't remember it, but do come in, Mr. Sparrow. Oh, thanks. Well, he never said a word about Cox Sparrow. Hmm. That's not very friendly, is it? Well, it's probably just my bad memory. Will you have a drink, Mr. Sparrow? I wouldn't say no to a spot of whiskey. Not much of a view, is it? Well, here's to your bright eyes. I'm sorry. That's all right, Mr. Sparrow. I take it as a very nice compliment. Tell me, has your business here got anything to do with Arthur's trouble? Has he been home already? No, no, but he phoned me. Oh. What sort of trouble? Well, I expect he'll tell you about it himself if he wants to. I'd like to ask you if this is a social visit. Please don't stay too long. He's been flying all night. I know the feeling. Oh, don't worry. My business won't take a minute. Well, there's his car. You have very acute hearing, Mrs. Holt. Hello. No, don't look so worried. It's going to be all right. Well, this is Mr. Sparrow here to see you. Sparrow? Who's he? Oh. Peter and Dee. What is it? What's happened? That man. He shot Arthur. Call the ambulance, Dee. Take care of Catherine. I'm going after him. He's been shot in the chest, and he's losing a lot of blood. Come quickly and send for the police.
Did you see a man coming out of here? No, mate. Anything wrong? Inspector Heath, can you give us a description of the man who shot your husband? Mrs. Holt is blind. I'm sorry. Still, if you can give us anything to go on. Yes, of course, Inspector. He was a tall man. He smokes. He was a Londoner, an Air Force staff, I'd say, by his accent. He had a soft hand, too soft for anyone who did any kind of physical work. Oh, well, that's something. Any other ideas? Yes, he was wearing a raincoat. I could smell it. There was also a smell of tweed. Is that all? Yes, I think so. Mrs. Holt, do you know a reason why anyone should want to shoot your husband? No. Has anything unusual happened to him lately? Well, he, he rang me up from the airport this morning and said he was in trouble with the customs. When they opened his bag, they'd found a box of powder, a box he hadn't put there. They said they thought there was heroin in it. I see. Please sit down a moment. I'll check with the airport. We'd better not be seen together again for a bit. Suits me. How about the dough? The labor is worthy of his hire, you know. Call for it tomorrow at the usual place. It'll be there. Simmons speaking. Inspector Heath, Scotland Yard. Oh, yes? I've been through to your general office. They told me that you inspected aircraft BXY-540 when she came in from Cairo this morning. That's right. I understand you've confiscated some powder. Yes, we had an analysis made. I've got the report here. 64% heroin. We're applying for a warrant for Holt's arrest. Well, there's no hurry, Mr. Simmons. He's in hospital and not expected to live. No. What happened? He was shot. The airport says that... Are you Inspector Heath? I beg your pardon? Inspector, this is my brother, Peter Brady. Oh, the Invisible Man. How are you, Mr. Brady? How is Holt? Not so good. Your sister tells me that he phoned you this morning. That's right. He said he'd been framed and was waiting to be arrested. Framed? Did he say who by? Yes. He suspected his co-pilot, Sandy Mason. Do you know him? No. Pick up Mason, bring him to the yard. Huh? Perhaps you'll come with me, Mr. Brady. I have an idea you could help us a lot. Certainly, Inspector. I'll get in touch with you here later. Inspector Heath? He's here? Have you got his statement? All right, send him in right away. Mr. Brady, may I suggest you put down your cigarette? Okay, Inspector. Mr. Mason, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Mason. Sorry to trouble you. There are one or two questions I'd like to ask. You don't Arthur Holt long. Well, I've been flying with him for six months now. Did you ever suspect that he was involved in anything like this? No, no. Uh, well, not until just before our last flight home. Mm -hmm. I see here that an attempt was made on his life in Cairo. Did you see where the shooting came from? No, I was in the shop at the time and I heard the firing outside. Hmm. Where were you this morning at 11 o'clock? Um, I was in bed. At 11 o'clock in the morning? Well, I was flying all night, Inspector. Yes, so you were. Well, thank you, Mr. Mason. If there's anything else we want, we'll get in touch with you. Um, will the squad car take me home? No, Mr. Mason. 
you're in trouble with the bus fare, they'll oblige you in the office outside. Thank you, I can manage. Well, Mr. Brady, what do you think? Could be. You want me to have him followed? No, Mr. Brady's kindly trailing him for us. It's oh, quite an idea. Then I'll be on my way. There's no hurry, sir. They'll keep him stooging around outside till we give the word. You'll make careful note of his contacts, of course. If he is in the dope ring, then it won't be long before he gets in touch with one of them. I'll call you as soon as I have any interesting news. Mm -hmm. Be seeing you. Inspector Heath? This is Brady here. He went straight to his flat. I followed him in. He took a wad of money from a hiding place and put it in an envelope. Where is he now? I followed him to a newsagent's. He left the envelope with the money with the man behind the counter. Hmm. Accommodation address, eh? Yes, that's what I thought. Someone will be calling for it. My guess is it's the pay envelope. The man that collects it will be the gunman. You better get back to the shop. I'm watching it through the window of this phone box. I must go now. I think someone wants to use the phone. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything for me? There you are, sir. Thank you, sir. Inspector Heath? This is Brady. The envelope has been collected. I followed the man. He's just gone into a restaurant at the corner of Becker Street. How about Mrs. Holt? She's on her way here now in a squad car. Call the car and tell him to bring her straight to me. What's the idea? Come right over and I'll tell you. Wait just around the far corner of the square. I'll be there in five minutes. Here she comes. It's me, Catherine. Hello, Peter. They said you needed me. There's a chance that we've found the man that shot Arthur. He's in the restaurant around the corner. If the police arrested him, there'd be no way of proving it. You're the only witness, but you didn't see him. I remember his voice. I shall never forget it. That wouldn't convict him in a court of law. The gunman himself is the only other person who was there. We must make him give himself away. Did he know you were blind? He must have done. Supposing we were to convince him that you could see all the time. Well, how on earth can we do that? You're going to walk straight into that restaurant just as if you could see. Walk straight up to him and accuse him. I can get around my own home all right, but outside I'm lost. I'll be your eyes. Come along with me. I'll show you. All right. Now walk straight ahead. A little bit to the left. And here's my car now. Stop. Reach down with your right hand. Open the door. That's it. We're going to drive around to the restaurant. But I can't drive. You don't have to. Squeeze over to the right. 
Let me get my feet on the controls. Now, put your hands on the wheel. That's right. He's sitting by the window. He'll see you drive up. That'll shake him. Looking this way. Look at the flap inside your bag as if you were looking in a mirror. you all the way into the restaurant and straight up to his table. Here's the door. Hand waist high. That's it. It's you. You're the man. I don't know what you're talking about. You're the man who shot my husband. You must be mad. If you're driving, make it convincing. He'll be watching you in the mirror. Hopkins, don't even see we're following him. Tell me you were blind. It's a pity for you you're not. You want the general office? No, Alex Simmons, we want you. But well, what is this? Your friend Cox Sparrow has been talking. Sparrow? Alias Andrew Walter. Oh, that cheap crook. And your friend Mason. If it's any comfort for you to know it, you're not the only one to be arrested. We've got the rest of your ring. Mrs. Holt, the doctor has good news for you. Your husband would like to see you now. Thank you, Peter, for everything. Goodbye, Catherine.